Sturgis. It's the home of the biggest biker party in the world. Each year, hundreds of thousands of riders make the pilgrimage to the Black Hills Rally to ride and to party. This year, six wide-eyed Aussie trikers have made the journey to experience it for themselves. Bloody motorbikes everywhere, absolutely amazing. Unless you've been here, it's very hard to describe it. People are past you and thumbs up. Oh, mate, it's fantastic. It's something you, you just dream about. It just bikes, bikes and more bikes. You can never describe in words what it really feels being amongst it and, and, and riding amongst it in, in, in such an atmosphere. I come on the 75th anniversary of 1.2 million people here. This year we're going to about over half a million. It's a nightmare as it is. What have you like with twice the amount? Gee. The whole place is just buzzing for 10 days, 24-7, and it never ends, it never stops. My name's Johan. I, I run Austrikes in Australia. And as it is, we got a few mates together to, um, to, to, to ship the trikes over to the US to do a road trip. My name's Steve Melchior. I'm the owner of Elite Products. I make camper trailers back in Australia. And it's my fifth trip bringing a camper trailer to America. Today, we were lucky enough to have six of these tri boom trikes with the Aussie flags on the rear of them, traveling down the main street of Sturgis. It's a childhood dream to to, to drive down the main street of searches with, with your own trike, with your own wheels. Six boom trikes for them was, even if there was one, it was a great spectacle, but six of them. It's mind blowing what we did today, it was fantastic. The trip didn't start in Sturgis, but from North Carolina, where the bikes were shipped to from Sydney. We caught up with the boys four weeks into the trip in the deep south. We're just in New Orleans at the moment. Music, food, dancing, people watching. We love New Orleans. New Orleans is always welcoming to everyone. Big smiles, lots of hugs. When you look at this group here from Australia, how can you not have fun and know that we're a blend of all of the cultures that come to see us and that live here. We've just done a tour of uh, Bourbon Street, which to me is just unbelievable. When we first took off from the car park that we decided to all meet at, it doesn't take long at a roundabout or intersection to get lost, which has happened to us many, many times. Up the front there, I could not tell who was behind me. And uh, so many side streets, I had to manoeuvre away around all those little side streets, but luckily we got out without being killed. It's quiet this time of day, but uh, night time, it's wild. It's a real wild place. We created some attention, something new. Everyone was happy, taking photos, and yeah, us Aussies are creating some interest here. From here, we go over the widest or longest bridge in the world and then head off up to Sturgis. I believe that that's 24 miles. They'll have a beautiful ride over that. They'll be able to see all of the birds flying around. And sometimes when you're on the causeway, you can have a, a pelican just going right along with you as you travel. So I hope that that happens for them today. From New Orleans, the Aussie trikers head north into Mississippi. They travel along Highway 61, also known as the Blues Highway. There's a road called the Natchez Trace. It travels from Natchez up to Nashville. It's 444 miles long, one lane either way, no, no crossroads, you just go 440 miles. In uh, the 1800s, it was a, the trade route from the north down to the south to Natchez where the port is. The Trace is a beautiful drive. You've got all those trees out. That's just nice driving. That's far better than on any interstate. I'd rather drive them all day, every day and they're beautiful roads just to travel, nice and quiet, and nice, smooth, good roads. It's just a, a beautiful area, lovely, lovely roads all the way through it. Strictly enforced 50 mile per hour speed limit through it. It's all federal government, so if you get booked, it's 600 bucks. So we won't be going too quick through there today. The city of Natchez is set on the mighty Mississippi River. We're doing a tour around the old part of Natchez, then we're going down to the old port area where we see you know, old bars and where the old seamen used to work. Then we're going to cross the uh, bridge from Mississippi to uh, Valdivia. Then we'll return back this way. Then we'll start heading north to Vicksburg. That's a very historical town. There's a major, major battle for the Civil War in that area. 
The town of Vicksburg was under siege for over two months by the northerners and uh, there's a lot of history there. And there's a beautiful uh, memorial park dedicated to those battles. It looked good when we left Vicksburg. The further we went on, the, the harder it got. It wasn't the rain that bothers you, it's, it's more you can't see where you're going and if, if the road disappears in front of you because it's all just water, that's when it becomes a big interest, bit interesting. But uh, we set it out under an old petrol station for, for half an hour and uh, it eased off a bit and we were good enough to, to battle back on. We made our way up the road into Clark's Dale. We found a place to stay for the night and then we went down to Ground Zero Blues Bar. Morgan Freeman owns the establishment, the building. Yeah, we didn't see him that night, did we? He wasn't there. And it was very laid back and very bluesy, nice place and the people were very friendly. I enjoyed the music. I'm into my country and western and a bit of the blues and apparently blues and that type of music in that town is just a big thing. The, the music, the atmosphere, the, the effort, everything was, was worthwhile pushing on that day. We ended up staying until Stumps. Stumps being, um, what if I said three o'clock in the morning, would I be telling the truth, Tim? <laughs> The crew departs Clarksdale with a sore head or two, but it's only a short ride up to Memphis, Tennessee, home of the blues. Memphis is a fantastic place. It's got a lot of history in the area. We actually went out and stayed pretty well across the road from Graceland, had a look around the area, rode into the famous Beale Street in the afternoon, had a look. Uh, it's just unbelievable there. They block off both ends of the street so you can't get vehicles in there and people just wander up and down the street, go into the bars, check out the music. Plenty of attractions there in Beale Street. Very, very nice place. It's a, a place you've got to visit when you're going to change and uh, it's not just all about Elvis, it's, it's really the, the home of the blues and I guess that's why they call it, uh, you know, Route 61, the Blues Highway, and uh, you, you go from town to town and uh, you, you really feel the character about it. As much fun as Memphis was, it was time to get back on the road, as the rally in Sturgis was only a few days from kickoff. It was an interesting morning, like, um, you didn't know if you, if you ride into more rain or not, and you got it actually for the first time for a long time a bit cold. Now we actually more into a drier climate and uh, yeah, more rider friendly that way. We decided to ditch the interstate and we found a few, few back ways. We headed up uh, through the Ozarks and the sort of mountain range, the waterways, right over the top of the dam. Very good country roads, very windy, nice twisties, just slow flowing country roads, not a real lot of traffic and we had a ball, we had a ball. If you stay away from the interstate, you you really see the real people and, and the real towns and uh, the little corner shops and all those kind of things. Uh, it's just a whole a whole different experience and that's what the highlights is and that's what we, what we try to do from here on playing little hourly trips on, on back roads. We may not cover as, as bigger days and bigger miles, but it's, it's just heaps more interesting than, than going on the interstate and getting from A to B. We're in Springfield, Missouri, and we're at the Route 66 Car Museum and about to have a look at all the cars in there. And uh, we just came down part of the old 66 and it's a quiet little part of the town. Uh, we're on Route 66 in the car museum and uh, just looking at some of the old cars uh, around the place. Some beautiful um, convertibles back in the 20s and 30s. It's a fantastic collection. Well, I just love the old ones with the running boards and the big guards, big straight eights. You can't beat them. They're just magnificent. We're standing in front of the Batmobile, as you can see. This is our first real touch of Route 66. Um, having a great time, enjoying things, and carrying on. We've done a lot of camping on in state parks. They're a fantastic place to camp in. We had this whole campground ourselves, except a, it was a motorhome about 
100 metres away from us, and the bloke who was living in this motorhome came over and started talking to us. I'm so glad that you guys are out here traveling the world and believing in folks like us, because we appreciate what you're doing more than what you know. He was a real character. He lived there for about 14 years in this motorhome. He uh, was a drunk. He, was a, he smoked dope. <laughs> Once upon a time, this was a place full of money and private planes and weekend getaways. But uh, we have a tendency to, to not value what we have. And then we figure out what we really have. He was just a character. He and he, the lake that we're camped on. He called it Greg's Lake. His name was Greg, and he said, "It's my lake. You can do what you want here." And it was just a funny night. <laughs> it was time to put in a couple of big days of riding across Kansas and through Nebraska. Is big, wide open country, and if you like farmland, well, there's lots to see. And if you don't like farmland, well, maybe you should take a plane. Well, I gotta say, the the, the endless country roads. Um, you, you get to one horizon and then um, you, you, you follow the road to the next. So it's, it's just beautiful scenery, uh, lush green country, a lot of, lot of intensive farming here. But um, people are just blessed in, in living in, in an area like it. And um, we spent nearly two, three days just crossing Kansas and uh, Nebraska. You meet some pretty amazing people on the road to Sturgis. This man was headed there himself and put on an impromptu show for the lads. He was a bit of a character too, a couple of hours of Johnny Cash music outside of a motel in a place called Chadron, uh, which is in Nebraska. I've been coming to Sturgis for about seven years. Um, Johnny Cash tribute artist from the Cold Heart Cash Show. In my band, I've been to uh, New Hampshire, and I've been to Daytona, and I've been to Galveston, and I've been to Sturgis many, many times. And this is the true bike rally, because it has the best rides, for one, driving up to Mount Rushmore and to Crazy Horse and, and going to uh, Devil's Tower. You can't beat it. Florida can't beat that. You can drive along the beach in Florida. You can drive up and down the street. But this is the West, and it's big. And, and our highways go everywhere. They go through some of the most beautiful scenery you'll see in any place in the world. And this is this attracts bikers, but you know everybody in the world should see the beauty of this place. You, yeah. yeah. This morning we left Shadron early this morning, eight o'clock this morning. We're heading up to Wall via the Badlands in South Dakota. Looking at our map here, working out where we're gonna go. We go up here, then travel up through the Badlands, up into Wall. About a 50 mile ride. Weather's warming up, uh, sun's coming up. Uh, so it's gonna be a nice day. Badlands is bad land. It's just nothing can grow there. It's just, just, um, stony formations or rocky formations or earth formations just everywhere just spread out over the whole area and uh, nothing will ever grow there but it's spectacular it's well worth the visit we're at the badlands uh, national park pretty stark pretty amazing place it's nice to see some corners you know there's uh, uh, there's a lot of straight roads uh, in the US, but it's nice to, to be able to sort of just ride along and ride through some corners with this pretty amazing type of uh, landscape. Oh, it looks like moonscape, actually, yeah. But if anyone's been to Western Australia, just think of the bungle bunk. It's very simple. And I think a lot of it was too, was uh, used in the Second World War for bomb practice and shooting for the um, pilots. I've done it three times now, and it never, never stops amazing me, the place that I see the formation, the rock formations, and how it's all come about. I just cannot believe it. It's just a magnificent place to tour through. If you haven't done it, you've got to do it. So I think it's that sort of place. Leaving the Badlands means only one thing. Next stop is the Black Hills Rally in Sturgis. We are now currently in Sturgis, South Dakota, at the biggest bike rally in the world. Unfortunately, words cannot describe what we're doing and what we're living and what this place is. 
because you, you get um, half a million of people coming together to enjoy what they're doing, riding their bikes, their trikes, anything on wheels. This is my fifth trip to Sturgis, so four times I've brought my own Harley, this time I got my trike. It's just as good as ever, it's just a magnificent place, like 500,000 bikers in one place, and all they had here to enjoy themselves, so it's nothing, you can't get any better than that, can you? Well, we're camping here at uh, Hog Heaven Campground, probably two k's out of the middle of uh, Sturgis, nice little place. I haven't stayed here before, but I stayed next to it, and like, we used to sneak across the back fence from the previous accommodation and come to this place all the time. And it was a great little spot, got plenty of bars, got music on at night time, it's got everything. Massive, massive area, we can camp anywhere you want, there's no restrictions on you. Just all grass, all green grass, lovely area. So we're, we're enjoying it here, having a great time. As you can see, having a beer now, it's beautiful. <laughs> Today we were lucky enough to go into town. We went out to the Buffalo Chip. It's a massive big complex. People camp there. It's, got, it's, it's a full village on itself. It's a, it's a town. It's got everything there. You don't have to move from the Buffalo Chip. Uh, it's all there. And also we went and visited uh, the Full Throttle, uh, which was burnt down two years ago in its original position. It's now moved about seven, eight miles further out of town and it's starting to take shape as it used to be. Uh, tonight we'll take it slow and steady, hour by hour, beer by beer. You can't say you've seen it all until you've spent a night out in Sturgis during the rally. It's a great place to have a drink and let your hair down. Oh, last night we were just wandering around town, uh, checking out men the numerous bars. Uh, just music, 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 loud music, soft music, every type of music, every type of beer, every type of sight you'd want to see. It's just a great spot. The Black Hills is known for having some of the best riding in the world. We done a 320 kilometre loop today. Travelled down through Custer down to Custer National Park. We did the needles, travelled through the needles. We had fantastic rock formations and tunnels through the rocks and all that. The needles, that was another amazing sort of formation there. and The way it's just all just sticking up in the middle of nowhere, all those rocks and then your tunnels carved through for the roads. Just, again, amazing country for riding, amazing landscape from one extreme to the other. Then we went into Custer National Park. I've been there, this is my fourth time in Custer National Park. I've never missed seeing a bison until today. Last time there would have been two to three hundred bison on the side of the road. Now today we've seen one. So I'm not sure whether they're all in hamburgers or what. I'm not sure what's happening with them all, but uh, they're gone. <laughs> I did see one, yeah. I saw it from the top as we came in, and then I had to wait a while because he'd been walking up behind us, so we were lucky to catch him. But yeah, through this marvellous country, it just changes from green grass where the bison were to just mountain range and pine trees and through the Black Hills there. It's just all pine. It was just a totally different experience today. You're up there riding around with a group of friends on your trikes. There's thousands of people on motorbikes and everyone's just out cruising around, enjoying the scenery. It was just a brilliant day going up there and seeing Mount Rushmore uh, on a trike. Then we come back up through Iron Range. That was an absolutely fantastic ride. Everything you want in a motorcycle ride. It was great. Absolutely brilliant riding. Uh, everyone had a ball, everyone was courteous just free-flowing roads and having a great time, enjoying the uh, scenery. Then we come back up here to Sturgis, and, and as I said, just on 320 kilometres a day, seen some beautiful places. You can't describe it unless you, you do it yourself. I, I uh, was attending a, a funeral uh, of a good friend of ours, um, Greg Hurst. Part of the celebration of his life was about that trip in 2016 about Sturgis and the trip to America and all those things. So it, it was a highlight of his life and for temporary Australian for what he did and how he came about. Johan and myself put our heads together. We come up with a group of people and within 14, 15 months later, here we are in Sturgis. We've done it. Do it while you can because you never know what happens tomorrow or next week or the year after. You don't want to end up sitting in the corner and, 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 and regretting it one day. I should have done and I didn't or whatever. So, so live life to the fullest and I die happy tomorrow after this trip because that's one big box ticked. This ride is dedicated to Greg Hurst, to tell you the truth, yeah. <laughs>